When should you stop negotiating with coin dealers? Hi, my name is Drew with Kusha Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're gonna be talking about kind of the power shift that you should think about when you're negotiating at coin shows with coin dealers. We go to over 40 coin shows a year and we're just wanting to give you guys helpful tips on how to acquire coins and also what coins that you might want for your collection. There's a lot of coin dealers at coin shows that shoot straight, that wanna sell you coins, that wanna offer you pricing on coins. But there are some coin dealers that literally just sit there to take up your time at the coin show, take away from the availability of other coins that may be on the floor. And we're going to be speaking about why those things are hurtful to you and hurtful to the coin dealer that uses this negotiating tactic. So the coin dealers that you really should never negotiate with are the coin dealers that say, throw me an offer, name me a price. I've been, like I said, to so many shows and when a coin dealer tells me that, I instantly know that this deal most likely won't happen. Nine out of 10 times, I don't end up spending money with them and I end up taking unnecessary time out of our schedule at a coin show uh, to try to make a deal that wasn't gonna work in the first place. They just don't wanna sell you a coin. And we're gonna talk a little bit about an example of that when that happened to us at the Broken Arrow Coin Show. But first, let's talk about what you run into with us when we kind of sell you coins. So. If you're gonna buy a coin from us, not only do you have adequate pictures, but you also have the plastic that it goes around kind of to protect it if you wanna carry it around the house. Um, and also when you look at the back of the coin, you also see a price. So the main problem with this is that not only when you're at a coin show that you have to find the coin that you want for your collection, you have to find this missing piece that has taken you a while, but you also have to find the price as well. And I just think that the way that you can have this stop or the way that throw me an offer can end is when you kind of take back the power from the coin dealers that say that to you because um, when you give them your time, when you give them your energy to try to negotiate this way, you can end up just feeling kind of like a bad taste in your mouth. If you guys want to take a look at what we have on our website, our website's AkushaCollectibles.com. We upload coins weekly there. We also have new shirts coming out. I'm gonna show the model on screen right now of uh, what the shirts look like, and uh, we hope you guys pick one up. So the most recent example of a time where we had a bad taste left in our mouth from a coin dealer is when we were at the Broken Arrow Coin Show, and this guy had a box of sample slabs. If you guys don't know what sample slabs are, is basically when a new holder came out, they would put sample Roosevelt dimes or sample Peace dollars or sample Morgan dollars in a slab so that people knew what the new gen or new model would look like. And he had kind of like a whole display and it was really nice. And so, you know, I wanted to buy some of them. And uh, I went up to the, the table and he said, hey, pick out the ones you want. You know, I, I wasn't gonna break them up before, but now I'm gonna break them up just for you, you're special. And so I took them out and he said, okay, well, I don't have them priced, come back later. So. It was about nine in the morning then. I came back at around almost noon. He says, I still don't have a price. I don't know what to do. Um, come back later. So I come back right before we leave the show. He puts him down and he goes, okay, well, you name a price, you throw me a price. And so I was like, okay, this deal isn't gonna happen. Like, watch this. So I name him a price. I mean, I'm gonna make $5 on a sample slab, $10 on a sample slab if I'm lucky. And, uh, he says, well, no, you know, I threw an offer. Oh, well, I pay, I pay more than that. I, you know, he just shoes me off, Thro throws all the, all of the time that I've spent trying to work with him away. He doesn't even entertain my offer. Doesn't give me a counter offer. Doesn't have a price in mind. And then as soon as I leave the table, another dealer comes up that he uh, works with on a daily basis. And he goes, can I buy those sample slabs off you? And he ended up buying them and using my offer to kind of almost have a, an upper hand with the next dealer to negotiate with. Like I said, when I run into these best offer scenarios and you use your time, we use probably 10, 15 minutes the whole day, and then we used our time to kind of price these things out for him to then use our price for the next coin dealer. The way to really take back this from, from coin dealers is say, hey, I, I don't feel comfortable negotiating with you on this unless you have a price in mind. It's your coin. It's your inventory, you have to make a profit, I understand. And if you don't want to name a price, I just think we can't do business on this, on this deal. Because like I said before, there's coin dealers out there that wanna sell you something, that have a price, that 
want to shoot straight and there's some dealers out there that want to string you along use you to sell coins to a different coin dealer for more and that's just the game i don't want to play so another way to say throw me an offer is basically when the coin dealer comes from the perspective of instead of the them being the expert on the subject they become the novice or they they basically approach the deal as they are a novice or someone that doesn't know the full scoop and wants an expert opinion so like i said before the coin dealer approached me saying hey i don't really know what these go for i don't really know what i want to sell them for i'm just a novice on this subject when when he's probably sold hundreds of sample slabs and so when there's that bait and switch happening i just don't think it would work um, what do you guys think of this do you guys run into problems like this at coin shows sometimes um, i'd love to hear your thoughts down below if you guys did enjoy this video make sure to leave a like and uh, yeah we'll see you guys in the next video before this video ends, I wanted to show you guys a few things that we picked up recently. Just some really nice coins. Uh, this first coin I want to show you is this 1929 Denver. It's great AU58 by NGC. Nice blast white coin. Um, just definitely some nice eye appeal on it. And it's pretty affordable. And so that's why I wanted to pick it up. Next coin I want to show you is this 1860 Halftime. It's great AU55 by PCGS. Really nice color on both sides of the coin, so that's why I wanted to kind of showcase it a little bit today. Also got some nice uh, CAC approved coins, but first, here's this 1905 Liberty V nickel. It's graded MS65 by PCGS. And when you look on the back of it, there's a there's this thing right here, it's called a price. And that price is $400. And so sometimes you uh, either go to a table and you see a price on a coin, or you go to a table and there's no price on the coin. It's whatever they feel like they can uh, get away with. And so that's why we just like to keep things easy and, and keep them flowing. And uh, yeah, that's why we have prices on coins. So it's a 1918D Standing Liberty Quarter, graded AU55. It's original, it's CAC approved, it's an early date. It's got all the bells and whistles. A little dark, but that's what you kind of expect with AU type coins and uh, Got a few CAC approved Morgan dollars here. A little bit of a tougher date, 93.0. It's great VF25, BCGS. Also CAC approved. Just nothing really distracting on the coin. Nice wholesome as well. And then we also have a 99S, which is great at AU58 by PCGS. CAC approved also. Just a really nice AU58. Luster isn't crazy, but I don't see a ton of issues in terms of surface area marks just a little wear two tougher coins as well that we got in we got uh, this 26d buffalo nickel it's great au53 a little subtle toning but it's a little bit harder because this coin's darker for an au and uh but this coin doesn't come up too often for buffalo uh buffalo nickels and so we wanted to pick it up offer it more as a kind of a unique uh you know, a lot of these that you see in 26D haven't gone up for auction in a few years. So when I can pick them up and offer them, it's, it's better because you don't have to go searching or waiting for an auction when you can literally pick it up on a, a website. So it's a 1938D Walker. It's, it's just beautifully blast white. It's a tougher date for the series. It's 64 plus. It's got nice true views as well. I mean, the coin's immaculate. Very happy that we can offer it. It's a little bit more of an expensive coin, but the coin really, really didn't want to pass up. 